Good evening, my name's Joel, and welcome to my introduction to the Pitol Micro Lathe. This particular lathe was bought from a second-hand tool dealer called GNM Tools. I'll put their link in the description below. Uh, the lathe is a Pitol Micro Lathe, uh, made by a company called Tig in America. The lathe itself is based off a system of aluminium extrusions with a ground steel dovetail bed which gives a pretty precise machine for the cost and for its size. Uh, apologies for the poor filming setup. Uh, I'm running this on a limited budget and I would rather uh, spend the project money I do have on buying tools and equipment rather than filming equipment. And so this video has actually been recorded using the built-in camera on my computer. Uh, which is why there are the angles, uh, camera angles are quite limited and some things I'll have to explain rather than show. So apologies for the sound, I don't think the built-in microphone is brilliant. At the minute the lathe is half set up. The job in progress at the moment is a small crankshaft for a model steam engine. Uh, this is, as I say, in progress. There's it's turning between centers, so I'll be able to show you the setup I'm using. There's also uh, various other pieces of equipment that I can show. Right, let's get into a basic summary of the various parts of the lathe. So to start off with, we have a drive belt. It does connect the motor here, which is a dual speed single phase uh, induction motor that runs at uh, 1400 RPM. There's a pulley reduction that can take a reduction of uh, about three to one either way so it gives a, a decent speed range and uh, get some quite high speeds with this small spindle. Uh, in order to mount the belt there's this pulling lever here. Uh, the motor is mounted on flexible rubber mounts so pull the lever, motor moves forward, the belt can be set so now the motor and the lathe spindle are connected. The lathe is switched on by a switch down off camera. Uh, I can show you, wearing the appropriate safety gear of course, uh, the two different speed ranges. So we have a slow speed range. And let the spindle run down. And now a high speed range. Right, quick change of camera angle. Uh, the lathe is mounted on a plywood block here. Uh, with angle iron coming out and this is actually now the bed of the lathe so this is just a stand uh, under here this allows for cleaning and hopefully as a future addition I will put in a chip tray that will catch all the chips uh, also for chip protection I have a magnetic base stand uh, commonly used to mount dial indicators and such like uh, with a perspex cover here, uh, which keeps all the chips in and not all over the floor. The various operating controls on the machine, we already talked about the uh, fast and slow switch down here. The cross slide, we have a graduated hand wheel here. Uh, this lathe is in Imperial, so each division on the hand wheel is one thousandth of an inch. The carriage is moved by a rack and pinion, so the rack along the bed and the pinion inside. Uh, there is a carriage stop which is adjustable, I hope you can see on the film, but this rod slides in and out and depending on where it is placed there is a hard stop to either end the depth of cut or prevent the tool bit from cutting into the chuck. Uh, around the back there is also a carriage lock which prevents the carriage from moving for uh, either facing or parting off. The tail stock is moved along the bed uh, by adjusting this thumb screw. Uh, at the minute there is a live centre piece in the tail stock for turning between centres to make the crankshaft as mentioned previously. Uh, it can be released by undoing this knob on the top slide in and out. There's also a drilling spindle which will go in here in the same way with the drill chuck on. The other main pieces of equipment I have for the machine are a vertical milling slide which provides 
three axes of movement to the machine and can do some quite limited small milling operations. Uh, so this piece will sit on the cross slide and the height of the work can be adjusted via another hand wheel. Uh, in order to hold the work, you can either use the T-slots on the milling slide or use this small uh, toolmaker's vise. I got all the other usual accessories with the lathe. So in addition to three draw chuck, we also have four draw chuck, face plate. I made a small ER16 collet chuck, which takes sizes up to 10 millimeters, which is invaluable actually for small work. This three draw chuck doesn't cope well with holding small work pieces. Next time I do any actual turning on the lathe, probably gonna be this crankshaft piece, uh, I will try and get some footage of that and post it.